Nobody will come between us and Allah. Even the Prophet wasallam is not in between us and Allah. Actually, his job is to connect us, connect us to Allah directly. You know, the difference between us and Christians primarily, they pray to God too, but they say they pray to God through Jesus. We pray to God through no one. Through no one. We just pray directly to Him. That's the first thing. Worship. Direct worship of Allah. No one in between. So before you even get to the advice, make someone feel loved. Make someone feel appreciated. That's, that's wisdom. That's why he began with Ya Bunayya. Every word here is wisdom. Then he says, La tushrik billah. Don't do wrong by Allah. Don't do wrong by Allah. Don't associate anybody. Don't associate anyone with Allah. And I know you've heard these words before. Don't do shirk. Don't associate with Allah. But now, because we're, we've reached that first advice that Luqman is going to give his son, not to do shirk with Allah. It's interesting, right? He didn't give him advice about how he needs to be good to himself, how he needs to be good to his mother, how he needs to be good to someone else. He started with, you need to be good to who? Allah. And he didn't even say, you need to be good to Allah. He said, don't be bad to Allah. Don't do shirk with Allah. Don't associate a partner with Allah. So we're going to explore a little bit, what does it mean to associate a partner with Allah? And I'll try to use uh, Hafiz ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah's distinction uh, and his discussion. I'll simplify that for you. And hopefully you'll remember it for the rest of your lives, inshallah. It's very important that you do. What is our relationship with Allah? Allah is our master and we are his slave. We are his slaves. We are abd. He is rabb, master. We are abd, we are slaves. Now. Me as slave, I basically, that means five things. So try and remember these five things. Me as a slave of Allah means practically five things. And so I'm going to walk you through those five things. Then we'll understand what shirk means. Okay, but first let's understand what it means to be a slave. The first thing that being a slave means is, is, is specifically with Allah, it would mean that I can only worship Him. I can only pray to Him. I can only do sajda to Him. There are certain praises and there are certain glory glorifications that I can only do for Allah, I can't do for anybody else. When someone other than Allah is being elevated, the way only Allah should be elevated, I will not be able to tolerate it. When someone else is being praised, the way Allah should be praised, I won't be able to handle it. Even though I already told you, you can praise someone other than Allah. But there are certain kinds of praises that are only for Allah. They're only and only for Allah. You know? Like Allah says, for example, I'll give you an example of that. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Masajid belong to Allah. Masjids, they belong to Allah. Don't call anybody else besides Allah in them. So masjid is a place where if you're going to do praise, who should, whose praise should it be? It should be Allah's praise. It should be Allah's praise. So if you go to the masjid and people are, you know, praising the governor or praising a king or praising this or praise this, it doesn't sit right. This is not the place. You might, you could praise him at an award ceremony, I don't care. But once you're inside the masjid, praise who? Praise Allah. So there's, that's kind of part of worship, right? We're going to only really pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla, not anybody else. Part of that is also, you know how people sometimes think that, um, and, and so unfortunately some Muslims hold this view too, that we're going to go to some shrine and some, you know, saint's grave, and we're going to go, you know, sacrifice an animal there, or we're going to go give some charity there, and we're going to go pray there, and somehow when we pray there, then our prayers are going to count for more. That's called ansab in, in the Qur'an, and it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. We're, we can, no, nobody's going to come between us and Allah. Nobody will come between us and Allah. Even the Prophet wasallam is not in between us and Allah. Actually, his job is to connect us, connect us to Allah directly. You know, the difference between us and Christians primarily, they pray to God too, but they say they pray to God through Jesus. We pray to God through no one. 
through no one. We just pray directly to Him. That's the first thing. Worship. Direct worship of Allah. No one in between. The second is obedience. This is an important one to understand. Obedience. Uh, can you think of who we obey other than Allah? Parents, who else? Think, think, teachers, sure. In a classroom you obey teachers. Who else? Huh? A boss. At work you obey a boss. What else? You obey state laws when you're driving, hopefully. You obey elders. When they ask you to do something, you obey them. Allegedly. Um, sometimes you obey siblings if they're powerful. If they're stronger than you, taller than you then it probably makes sense to obey them. Um, anything else you obey? Anyone else you obey? Sure, you can obey an imam. You can obey a police officer. Pull over. You pull over. Give me your license. We hear and we obey. You know? So we obey people in life, don't we? We obey laws, we obey parents, we obey elders, we obey teachers, we obey bosses. There's lots of obedience in life. But to be a slave of Allah, we say we obey Allah. The question though is, well we're obeying so many others, and we're obeying Allah too. Is that shirk? Because shirk means that you have partners. What you do to Allah, you do to someone else too. So my problem becomes, well we obey Allah, and we obey other people, so isn't that a kind of shirk? Well, no, it's not a kind of shirk unless, unless you break one rule. And that one rule is, if obeying someone else means that you're gonna disobey Allah, then it's shirk. If, I'll say that again, if you have to obey someone else, and obeying someone else will mean that you will be disobeying who? Allah, that will actually become shirk. Just give you an example of that. You're supposed to pray. Whose command is that? Allah. Your dad says, don't pray. I need you to do this, don't pray. Pray later. Dad, it's almost, the time's up, finished for salah almost. It's like five minutes left before salah time is finished. I don't care. Pray in an hour. Don't pray right now. Oh, now you've got obedience to parent or obedience to Allah. Guess what you got to do? No matter how much trouble you get in, you have to obey Allah. You have to obey Allah. Now, let me give you another scenario so I know you, you're thinking clearly. You're about to bite into some good halal chicken. Your dad says, come here, finish this work. But dad, the chicken's halal. <laughs> Who do you obey in that case? Your dad. I don't care if the chicken's halal. You're not commanded by Allah to eat the halal chicken. In that case, you obey your dad. So the only time you get to disobey your dad is when it means obeying him will mean Disobeying Allah, clearly disobeying Allah too, clearly disobeying Allah. Not just in your head it might mean disobedience to Allah, if it's clear, then yes. Similarly, the obedience to a king, the obedience to a government, the obedience to a teacher, the obedience to a friend, all of it is fine, unless it means disobedience to Allah. That would become shirk. You understand that? So that's what we mean by obedience to Allah. Okay?